Hello everyone, hope you had a good day. Uh, my name is Mark, I am the stock market jobber. Uh, people ask me what stock market jobber means, all right? Well, back in the 16 and 1700s, stock jobbers were professional traders that traded on the, in, uh, the London Stock Exchange. Um, when the country, the United States, was being founded, there was this debate between different parties and one party wanted to go to the agrarian model the other party wanted to go to the future banking model and stock jobber was used as a derogatory term so anyway i think it's pretty cool and it sums up a lot of what we do at our site here because we love to talk about history especially the history of wall street the reason why is because things have changed right the names have changed the exchanges have changed the companies have changed but human nature doesn't change. So I've been an institute, well, I'm, I'm, I was an institutional trader for a long time, for about 20 years. I was brought into the industry by Mario Gabelli, who's one of the greatest managers or investment managers in history. And I also traded directly for Steve Cohen, who's, in my opinion, probably the greatest trader to ever live. Uh, I was also the head of trading at three different institutional money managers. I was a market maker. So when it comes to trading, I've seen it all. So I just want to take a quick look at, at uh, the S&P 500 here, our SPY. We call this the, we call it SPY because that's a symbol. It's the S&P 500 ETF. It tracks the S&P 500. And we're at a really critical vantage point here. So we're going to make a big move, in my opinion, over the next few days. And whether it's going to be up or down, I don't know. My, I think it's going to be down. But let's just take a look at this chart here for a little bit of a trading lesson. Notice how a level that was resistance can stay intact for so long. It was resistance back here, became resistance here. For some reason, when the S&P 500 or the SPY gets to 410, there were people that wanted to sell. And there was so much more supply than demand, they put a top on the market and it ended up going down lower. We got above it, and sometimes levels that were resistance can convert into support because of buyer's remorse. I'm sorry, because of seller's remorse. People that sold regret selling when the price goes higher, and they tell themselves, I'm going to buy my shares back, but I'm only going to do so if I could get them for the same price I sold them at. So they place their buy orders at their former selling price. So remorseful sellers can create support. But here's the thing. We're right back to that level. The jury is still out on whether the market's going to break down or go higher. This is a good time if you're a trader just to kind of be on the sidelines and wait to see because it's like we're at a, we're, it's like we're at a fork in the road. Now this line here is what we call an uptrend line. It's really just a graphical illustration of what's going on. When a market is going higher, just the way the charts are drawn, it shows up as this uptrend. Well, if a market's going higher, what's the first thing it needs to do before it goes down? And the answer is it needs to stop going higher. So if we cross this trend line, which again is just a graphical illustration, at the same time we break down through this support, which is a large group of buyers, there's a good chance we go lower. The breaking of the trend line will tell us that, or could tell us that the tide has turned. The sellers have become more powerful than the buyers. The breaking of the support level will tell us that the investors who created support with their buy orders are out of the way. They've left the market. When you take demand or buy orders out of a market, it sets the stage for the sellers to push things lower. We can also see we were overbought, okay? Last time we were as overbought as we were now was back then in uh, August, right before a big sell. Overbought just means investors or traders have been buying this thing so aggressively it's gotten above what would be its typical or historical trading range and that in and of itself is going to draw sellers into the market because they're going to assume a reversion to the mean or reversion to the average so this combination of being at an important level testing a trend while being overbought you know there's no guarantee but to me this makes me think there's going to be a big tradable move over the next week or so. So please make sure you check back with stockmarketjobber.com. Please make sure you uh, log or sign up for our YouTube page, check out our website, and come back because there's going to be some money to be made over these next few days. All right. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time.